I'm sure all y'all have heard the news that the leafy content cop has been removed. Now I can sit here and cry, but what I'd rather do is go to YouTube headquarters and show Susan these moves. Uh, we're gonna have to move past this travesty. We're gonna have to, I mean, you could find the leafy content cop on YouTube still probably. I think it's been re-uploaded uh, quite a dozen times, uh, quite a dozen. I don't know if that's actual language. Yeah, it's, it's all good. I mean, it's all good until more videos get removed. One cool thing about all of this is that in the pursuit to uh, limit bullying, they obviously have to give some examples of what would be considered bullying, what would be considered too far. Uh, they gave us the example, repeatedly showing pictures of someone and then making statements like, look at this creature's teeth, they're so disgusting with similar commentary targeting intrinsic attributes throughout the video. So that's their example, calling someone a creature, which by the way is fucking hilarious. I love that, you know? You call like a like maybe a horse or a hedgehog, you call that a creature. You don't often refer to people as creatures. You know, there are some beautiful creatures out there like a uh, unicorn. I feel like maybe a lot of women get like uh, Facebook comments like that. Oh, you're such a beautiful creature. You are a gorgeous creature. Remove your blouse, please. <laughs> Fuck. I'm giddy today. Did you guys know, have you, are you guys sensing a different energy from me today? I'm giddy. Uh, what about someone's pet? This dog eats way too much. I do not know. All right, en enough of the YouTube stuff. We're gonna move on to something a little more lighthearted. Do y'all watch the streamies? Y'all watch the streamies, didn't you? I do feel a little bit bad for the streamies because I know that it would be difficult to appease everyone for an award ceremony. That just, it just by design, it, it, it seems like you can't make everyone happy. There was one particular performance at the streamies that really just, it's really hard to describe. Woo! Yeah! On the day of Christmas, the internet gave to me five big old things. <gasps> Candy! Four promo codes, three stunning wraps, two poppin' lips, and a yes from my gay community. If you guys are like me, you are watching this performance and you said to yourself, I don't like this. Why don't I like this? It's so hard for me to put my finger on it because I'm kind of trying to avoid being homophobic. But like everything kind of that I want to make fun of is hella gay. So what's the issue? It feels like this performance and Patrick Starr's character was written by a 60-year-old straight man from the perspective of what he thinks a gay person sounds and acts like. Oh, shit. Ah. Uh, babe, what do gay people like? Yes, I know they like men. Oh, wait, no, that's good. Uh, they like men, they like dick. Uh, five gay dicks. No, that's too specific? Five big old dicks. Yeah, they like them big, right? Okay, four butt plugs, three pride flags, two makeup brushes, and a yes, yes from my gay community. I don't know, guys. I want to hear from you on this one. I don't, I, my opinion, it could be completely wrong. I want to hear from you guys. This may be a shock to some of you, but uh, I spend some late nights browsing TikTok. Yeah. Kind of sounded like your mom when I said that, right? TikTok. And uh, I've come across many TikTok entrepreneurs. They talk a big game, uh, but they're all full of shit. It's this very, it's the exact same thing we experience when we're looking at Kickstarter projects. It's the fake it till you make it mentality. And if it's not that, it's just overselling yourself, overselling how much money you're making, and giving you a very poor idea of what business actually is. And uh, we're going to uh, not necessarily debunk them, because if it was that easy to debunk, then, you know, th they wouldn't have all these views and they wouldn't be selling their shit to people. Also, I think it's a good idea if I preface all of these sort of segments from here on out by saying, WARNING! My opinion is being shared on a channel that is my own. <laughs> I'm gonna start you guys off with the first video of this genre that I saw on TikTok, which, which really started uh, my seething hatred for these types of videos. Yoshi Day. 
This dude's filling up my gas tank. Ten dollars a month. What are you doing? Are you doing ten dollar an hour jobs? Or five thousand dollar an hour jobs? Your uh, where do you begin? Uh, you're not earning $5,000 an hour. It's, it's one of those things that business people love to do, which is like, I'm just going to fucking, I'm basically, this year, my average ended up being about $5,000 an hour. Of course, if, if, if you only work fucking one hour a year and you earn $5,000 in that hour, then, oh, oh, I guess, I guess it's a $5,000 an hour job. So no, it's just misleading from the get-go. Uh, on top of that, you have no idea what job that guy is doing. You don't know that that's a $10 an hour job. That's just a job that you prescribe to be a $10 an hour job because you want to minimize it. You can have a really good job towing cars, changing oil, doing whatever, filling people's gas tanks, and you can make bank doing that. Good money. You're not gonna be fucking buying Gucci every day, but I'm sure most of you are okay not buying Gucci every day. Listen, when setting goals, you need to ask yourself, do I want to be the one washing the car or the one paying for the car to be washed? Hashtag millionaire. When setting goals, it's important to ask yourself whether you want to flip burgers for the rest of your life or if you want to be the one telling people to flip burgers. Very useful. Very useful advice. Thank you. Hear me out. You got to have the core four. You gotta have fitness, relationship goals, religion goals, and financial goals. You keep those four in play, that's how you live a happy life, my friends. Keep killing it. <laughs> keep killing it. That's very much a uh, sort of a mogul way of speaking. Keep killing it. Keep on the hustle. I have the core four. The core yeah, four. Fitness. It feels like every galaxy brain mogul comes up with their own, uh, like, system. It's called... The three S's. Salary, success, salamanders. If you don't own a salamander, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Check it out, check it out. Look at that view right there, wow. Oh my God, you're so successful. It makes me sick. Down here checking out all the yachts. Oh my God, yachts. <laughs> it's so stereotypical. They all fucking do it. Every one of these entrepreneur moguls does this shit. It's not happening unless I'm recording it. It is not happening unless I'm recording it. I am here. I am here. I am surrounded by wealth. Fake it till you make it mentality, people. That's what they also say a lot. People. I've been telling you people. This is what it's all about, people. If you keep watching these videos, you'll start to talk like them. This is a woman I found recently who, uh, her focus seems to be just these bite-side tabloid-esque uh, representations of how she's making the money. So here's one good example. Here's how I made half a million dollars from my bedroom. Uh, uh, <laughs> it makes me want to fucking smash my phone. It really does. People who think this is fake are missing out. Marketing, reseller, hashtag Gary V, hashtag dropshipping. Mm. I, there, there's not a word I hate more than dropshipping. For those of you who haven't heard of what dropshipping is, I'll give you a very brief explanation of, of what the premise is. Someone is selecting a product or a range of products. They aren't buying it like Walmart would do. They are just allowing you to purchase it from a higher price from their pre-made website that scoops it from China and gives it to you. So I flip stuff online, but a little bit differently to Gary Vee. Instead of finding stuff at garage sales, I find them on AliExpress. Then I put them on my online store and mark up the price. Next, I make some ads. And then I market the shit out of it. Okay, so obviously this can be done. This is a gross oversimplification. Like the idea of, of $560,000. Like what is that? Oh, you made it from your bedroom. What, over 10 years? If it's over 10 years, then... I kind of fully expect that to happen. I vaguely, I made this large number. I want an excuse to put a large number in this TikTok. It's just nonsense. So I flip stuff online, but a little bit differently to Gary. It's not flipping stuff. You are not flipping anything because you are not purchasing anything. The price. 
Yes, you do bump up the price because China shits out cheap shit and everyone can buy Chinese shit if they wanted to. Next, I make some ads. And then I market the shit out of it. I fucking market the shit out of that shit, bitch. Fuck, cunt. I swear to God, she can be doing all of this shit, but the, the gross oversimplification and like sassy attitude that comes with all of this is nauseating. When people see I made 500,000 reselling stuff from China at a markup, that's illegal. It totally can be illegal. There is no law explicitly written out saying, you cannot drop ship. This is a very new concept. Of course there are no laws written, but there very well can be. Also, this is a very international thing. That in some ways, a lot of these people are probably avoiding certain taxes and levies that normal companies would have to pay if they're importing Chinese products into the US or Australia that they don't have to because they're diverting that cost as a singular unit that's getting sent directly to the customer. I'm sassy. I'm very sassy. And I'm just going to tell you how this shit is. Obnoxious. Ugh, I fucking hate this. Stop moving like that. It is not how most retail businesses work. What is this word most that you came up with all of a sudden? Most retailers spend money to buy a product. And that is called a risk. In your case, the risk would be spending money on ads to sell a product that isn't yours. So you might be diverting the risk down to the sort of the marketing or advertising aspect of it, but in some ways that I feel as though that is like the most scummy aspect of it. <laughs> but if Nike does it, people call it a business. Yes, because it is a business. It is a proper, legitimized business because they have standards they have to abide by, aside from sort of the Chinese labor laws, which, by the way, she doesn't have to abide by either, is the Chinese labor laws and what sort of shit is getting squirted into the products that she's using, all sorts of lead and everything else. There is a lot more than meets the eye with all of these sort of Wanna know how I'm earning so much fucking money? Cause I'm uh, fucking obnoxious, that's how. <music> Me, telling you to hustle too. No, this is just your way of gloating. That's all this is. You were just showing us your fucking money the whole time. That's all you were doing. <laughs> So yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's it for this video, you guys. I've just been talking for the past fucking three hours at this camera, and I'm, I'm simply done. I'm simply done with it. What am I doing? I'm working on videos. There's a lot of videos that are slow going uh, because I want them to be good and special. But yeah, I mean, I just need to get off my rear end and do what a lot of these uh, entrepreneurs are talking about. Like, what are you doing just sitting on your ass all the time? Dude, iDubs, you got that $5,000 an hour job. You gotta, you gotta go out there and squirt. Go out there and squirt on those people, dude. Make, make, make two, make two, three TikToks a day. And I, I guarantee you, by the end of the month, you'll be the most popular rapper on TikTok. I'm not a, I'm not a fucking rapper. <laughs>